Automatic bed leveling used to be pretty uncommon, but it's now seen as a requirement by many on any new 3D printers. And for good reason, it's cheap insurance to have a mesh of your build plate. There's a reason that the default setup for both Prusa printers and Bamboo Labs have bed leveling enabled before each print. But what if I told you for any 3D printer running Clipper, there's a way that you can speed up your meshes while also making them more accurate. During a live stream a few weeks ago, a viewer recommended that I looked into adaptive meshes. I had never heard of them before, but now that I am using them, I don't think that I can ever go back. So in today's video, we are going to dive into CAMP, or Clipper Adaptive Meshing and Purging. We'll talk a bit more about what it is, how it works, and we will go through the process of getting this up and running on your Clipper 3D printer. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. If you don't already know, every single Wednesday at noon Pacific Standard Time, we do a live stream over on the ModBot Army channel. We do things like build a Mercury 1.1. Right now we're working on a Voron 0.2, and then we are building the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. So if you're interested in seeing a bit more about some of the projects that I work on, or just kind of hanging out and getting a little bit of behind the scenes, I'll have links down below in the description over to that channel. The conversation about adaptive meshes started during a live stream when we were working on setting up the starting macro for the Mercury 1.1. Before each print, the Hydra bed runs a tramming sequence before creating a mesh of the bed. I have it set to run a 5x5 mesh, which is likely a bit overkill, but it is a 275mm bed, and due to the Ender 5 frame used, it isn't perfectly square. The 5x5 mesh has given me really consistent first layers, however it does take quite a bit more time than I would like, especially considering that more often than not I'm only printing on a tiny fraction of the entire bed. This is where the suggestion for setting up adaptive meshing came in. This led me to the awesome camp add-on for Clipper created by Kyle is a H. Unlike a standard bed mesh, which is at the same predefined points every time, Camp's adaptive bed mesh uses values grabbed from your G-code to define the points of the mesh. That means that the mesh will only be created where it needs to be and that it's going to be much more dense. This increases the speed it runs at by limiting probes needed and travel distance, along with making your mesh more precise thanks to it being contained to a smaller area. In Fluid or Mainsail, you can see how small the footprint of the adaptive mesh is while still being nice and dense compared to the massive mesh it would normally have grabbed from before. The good news is that setting this up is fairly simple and only has a few requirements. These are that your printer must be running Clipper firmware, that you need to have the exclude object module set up, and of course you need to have some form of automatic bed leveling set up on your printer. For Clipper firmware, I recommend updating to the latest version before starting, but as a minimum, you need to be on Clipper 0.11.0, which is when the exclude object module was added. If you're not sure, you can easily check your Clipper version from within your web interface. As for the exclude object module, we did an entire video on what this is and how to set it up that goes into much further detail that I'll have linked in the description down below. This process has you add exclude object to your printer.cfg, set enable object processing to true under file manager in your moonraker.config file, and making sure that your slicer has label objects enabled. Once you have the exclude object set up, we need to add the adaptive mesh.cfg file from the camp GitHub repository to our Clipper install. To do this, you can either download this file and upload it or go under machine, config files, create file, and name it adaptive underscore mesh.cfg. Then we can click raw in GitHub to get the text for this and copy paste it into that file we just created. Although we have this file uploaded to our Clipper install, we need to be able to access it from inside of our printer.cfg file. To do this, open your printer.cfg file and add open brackets, include adaptive underscore mesh.cfg, close brackets, and make sure that these spelling and cases are correct or you will get an error. If you're running a bed leveling setup that is attached to your tool head, like an inductive probe or a BL touch, all that you need to do is add bed underscore mesh underscore calibrate to your print start macro or to your slicer starting G-code. Then restart Clipper and you're ready to go. If like me, you're using a dockable probe such as Clicky or Euclid that's already using the bed mesh calibrate macro, you'll need to uncomment it. This was under my clickyprobe.cfg, but depending on how you installed it, it may be in a different location. Next, we need to go into our adaptive mesh.cfg file. Here we'll change the variable probe doc enable value from false to true and input the name of our attach and detach probe macros within the parentheses. 
These are set to attach probe and dock probe, which are the default macro names that Clicky uses, so I didn't have to change anything. At this point, you can restart Clipper and the adaptive mesh is set up. It is worth noting that if before this guide you didn't have your label objects set to on in your slicer, you'll need to re-slice your files for this to take effect, but I believe Cura as well as Orca Slicer both have label objects enabled by default. I've been really happy with the default settings, but under adaptive mesh.cfg, there are a few parameters that you can alter. These will allow you to do things like control status LEDs, set up fuzzing for nozzle probing, which offsets the mesh points to prevent bed wear, or set up a margin around your variable mesh. Unless you know that you need to play around with these things, I would just leave them at their defaults. Now when you slice up a file and hit print, you'll get a completely unique mesh each time that is specific to the area on your build plate that you're actually going to be printing. I think that this is such a powerful add-on, it makes way more sense than probing your entire bed each time just for the sake of it. Sure there are times when you're going to be printing something big or a full bed of parts when the adaptive meshing maybe won't save you a ton of time because it's going to need to make a full big mesh, but for all of the other times this is absolutely the way to go. For anyone that wants to take it a step further, the P in camp stands for purging. You may have noticed that although my mesh is variable, my purge line is still running in the same exact spot each time. In the same GitHub repository, there is an add-on that will allow you to also make your purge lines adaptive. Currently, there are two versions of this, with one purging a small line, more like a standard purge line, and one that purges three lines that make up the Voron logo, which is pretty cool, especially if you're going to be installing this on your Voron 3D printer. Setting up either is pretty straightforward, and just like with the adaptive mesh.cfg, we'll create a file called either voron underscore purge.cfg or line underscore purge.cfg, and simply copy the code from the respective file in the GitHub repository into our created file. Then add line underscore purge or voron underscore purge to your starting macro or starting G-code, and this will run at the beginning of each print. Depending on your hot end and extruder, you may want to adjust a few settings like the variable tip distance, which can be found in either of the purge configs. You should now have variable mesh up and running on your 3D printer, or at least have a much better understanding of what it is, how it works, and if it is something that you want to go ahead and get set up. I really don't see a downside to this and think that it is a much better setup than again, just the standard probing same spots grid solution every single time. And Going forward, I plan on getting this up and running on any Clippered 3D printer that I have as long as it's got automatic bed leveling. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Had you heard of adaptive meshing before? Have you used it? If you do end up giving it a go, definitely let me know what your thoughts are. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.